Hello everyone, my name is Brandon and I would like for this video, which will be in two parts, to be an introduction to photography and to help beginners who might be interested in either learning more about it or taking it up as a new hobby. Just to clarify, this video will focus primarily on the history, origins, and evolution of photography and the camera. So, what is photography? By definition, photo from Greek means light. While photography can translate to both the study and practice of capturing images utilizing light. The photography of today, which is known as a fully developed and established contemporary art form, is known to have originated in France back in the 1830s. While photography may seem like a relatively modern practice, there is possibly a more ancient origin to it, dating back several millennia. The concept or idea of capturing an image of something and being able to project it onto a surface is known as camera obscura, which is Latin for dark chamber or dark enclosure, which also explains how the device we are most familiar with today received its name. It is not entirely clear, however, how this concept acquired its Latin name, as the discovery of this process predates the Roman period. This practice of experimenting with light in dark places can be traced back to ancient times. There have been many theories of how this practice came into place and where it first began. While impossible to verify, one thing for certain is that the first written accounts regarding the camera obscura and the observations dates back to around 500 BCE by philosophers in ancient China during the Zhou dynasty period, over 3,000 years ago. Originally, a box with a hole poked through it known as the pinhole box, was used to study and experiment the camera obscura. This practice remained largely unchanged until the 16th century. In 1550, a man named Cardano from Italy experimented further with the camera obscura by replacing the pinhole box with a glass disc, allowing him to adjust the focus and create a bright and more vivid image. This was considered a phenomenal innovation to the process, as this discovery would evolve into the creation of the lens of the camera and the technique for controlling aperture. Aperture is the opening for which light can travel through, allowing for adjustments in overall image quality. Fast forward to the 19th century, after several millennia have passed of various studies surrounding this phenomena of camera obscura. The photography of today is closely linked to the modern process developed in France, the next phase of the photographic process. A man by the name of Nicephor Nieps is credited as being the inventor of photography and the first person to really put everything that has been studied and experimented with into play. Nieps dabbled in various techniques, such as heliography, which he also developed himself, and using the ancient camera obscura technique, utilizing a box with a pinhole, to further his studies. Between 1825 and 1826, using the camera obscura technique, Nieps created what is now known as the first ever photograph, which was a scene of the outside from his bedroom window in France. Considering the pinhole box is regarded as outdated and no longer practiced, you might wonder how our modern camera started out, and how we went from camera obscura to the refined and technical processes we use today. We will discuss the different phases the camera obscura would ultimately take on before it would become what we are all mostly familiar with today. The image Nieps captured using the pinhole box method was not meant to last, however, as over time, the image which was projected onto a thin metal plate eventually wore off. This proved that Nieps's initial idea would not yield permanent results, and something had to be either added or changed. While the very first photograph still exists, the image Nieps originally created is not very visible and can be hard to make out today. Another man, known as Louis Daguerre, took Nieps's idea, improved on the technique, and changed the materials used to retain the projected image, and developed the daguerreotype. The daguerreotype was essentially a sheet of silver-plated copper that was polished and made light-sensitive, and exposed within the camera obscura for a couple seconds to a few minutes. Depending on the subject and its details, the amount of time and exposure was usually an estimate and determined by the person making it. After being exposed and treated through a chemical process, the image would be complete. These new daguerreotype images proved more durable and yielded a lasting image compared to Nieps's original conception. 
They soon became a widely available and popular form of photography in the 1840s and 1850s. In 1851, a man named Frederick Scott Archer improved on the daguerreotype once more and reduced the exposure time to no more than three seconds, allowing for quicker processes. This came to be known as the collodion process, which can be seen as a somewhat of a precursor to gauging light or aperture in modern photographic processes. Perhaps one of the most important innovations since Niepce's first photograph would be the invention of the calotype technique. Invented by Henry Fox Talbot of Britain, the calotype process involved using a sheet of paper coated in silver iodide and exposing it to light inside a camera obscura. Areas that were touched by light were darkened, thus creating a negative image, which we are familiar with today. The film negatives we are accustomed to using, or at least prior to the advent of digital photography, can be traced back to the calotype technique, pioneered by Talbot. In the year 1900 was when the advent of mass photography was born. The first mass-produced and mass-marketed camera, known as the Brownie, was introduced to the public by the Kodak Company. Developed by American inventor George Eastman, the introduction of the Brownie camera revolutionized photography and thrust it into a new age. The Brownie was relatively small, portable, and sold very well up until the 1960s. The Brownie's success cemented Kodak's influence on modern photography as they had jump-started a whole new era, known as mass photography. Following the end of World War II, a new type of camera was introduced to the world, the SLR, or Single Lens Reflex Camera. While the SLR in function was not new, the size and portability is what made it special compared to its predecessors. The SLRs were popular amongst journalists due to their handheld size and lightweightness. The SLR's popularity continued to rise in the years following the Second World War and more and more professional photographers started to use them. These SLRs were originally German-made, but from the 1950s onward, Japanese-made SLRs became highly sought after. Japanese companies, Canon and Nikon, became the new faces of photography and dominated the camera market. Their innovations, products, and success can still be seen today. Over the next couple decades, Various cameras were developed and constantly being evolved and updated. Beginning in 1943, American Edwin Land developed the first instant camera, which allowed users to shoot and develop their film themselves. Though originally invented by Edwin Land, Polaroid developed their own version, called the Polaroid Swinger, launched in 1965 to commercial success. Polaroid's instant cameras proved to be some of the best-selling cameras in history. A decade later, the first ever digital camera was born, attributed to a 24-year-old Steve Sasson, who was working at Kodak in 1973. This first digital camera was known as the Electronic Still Camera and hit stores in 1975. While film cameras still remained popular and conventional throughout the 1970s and 1980s, digital photography didn't pick up until the 1990s. By the time the 90s came around, film slowly began to be replaced by digital cameras, which were known as compact system cameras, or point-and-shoot cameras. Around the same time, DSLRs, or digital single-lens reflex cameras, started to emerge, and quickly became the most sought-after type of camera for professional photographers, due to their crystal-clear, sharp images that they produced. Mass photography had finally entered the digital age. Throughout this time, photography as an art form gradually evolved itself. While daguerreotypes were usually expensive and reserved for the wealthy, other uses for photography included documenting subjects and serving as an aid to painting, which was still somewhat common throughout the 19th century. From the time between daguerreotypes were still widely in demand, and the brownie being introduced to the public, photography was primarily done in photo studios and was not entirely a portable practice as we know it today. Way before the advent of portable cameras, 
people interested in having their portraits taken or anything else of interest be photographed had to be done in a photo studio. Large format photography was popular and considered to be one of the earliest photography devices. Over time, as painting began to decline in popularity, photography became more popular and would soon develop into its own distinct practice. With the introduction of film rolls and cameras, photography had become widespread and more readily available to people. By the 21st century, photography had become something that was truly revolutionary and served as a way of capturing just about anything anyone could ever want. Where traditional artistic practices such as painting, sculpture, and others had dwindled in popularity, photography only continued to skyrocket, which is still going strong today. In the 21st century, photography would have never been as global as it is today without the introduction of the camera phone. The very first camera phone, developed and released by Samsung back in 2000, is something that has continued to make modern photography so accessible and enjoyable. As cell phones continued to evolve and technology improved, so did the camera functions. Apple's iPhones are possibly considered some of the most sought-after cell phones because of their versatile camera functions, also boasting high-quality images and various editing options. The advent of the camera phone coincides with the age of social media, such as Instagram and Twitter, which focuses heavily on the posting and resharing of images. The age of photography had reached another phase, where capturing images blend seamlessly into social media, which is where we are today in 2020. However you choose to take photos, whichever device you use, photography is something that has really come a long way from its origins as the camera obscura. Regardless of how you choose to take or view photos, one thing will always be certain. A picture or photo is worth a thousand words.